So thank you very much for joining with us in chanting Hare Krishna. This chanting of Hare Krishna mantra, this is a spiritual sound vibration and it comes from the transcendental realm. Mantra. Man means the mind and tra means to free. This is Hare Krishna mantra. It is called the Maha mantra, the great mantra. Mantra means that man means the mind and tra means to free. We need to free our mind from the material world. We're very entangled in the material world and we have forgotten our real identity, right? If I ask, who are you? You may say, I'm an Indian or you may say, I'm a woman or I'm a man. You may say, I am young or I am old, but that is the body. That is all talking about the body. But when we read, when we chant Hare Krishna mantra and when we read Bhagavad Gita, then we understand the body is just the vehicle. Just like here in Switzerland, everyone has a car. You drive your car. You are not the car, you are not Volkswagen or Benz or BMW, you're the driver of the car. The same way the body is like the vehicle for our real self. Who are we? We are all Atma. Atma. Atma, we would say the soul, we're all souls or Atmas. Some people may say Brahman, we're all Brahman, we're Brahman meaning spirit. So the soul is spirit. There are two natures, there is the material nature, there is also the spiritual nature. Material nature is temporary, right? This world is not eternal <coughs> and this body is not eternal. Your motor cars are not eternal. Your homes are not eternal. They are material. Material meaning temporary and they give some pleasure but the pleasure does not last very long. The pleasure is reducing as we go on in life. The pleasure becomes less and often it can bring us misery, can bring us trouble. Just like your car, you may have trouble with the car. You have to service it, you get puncture sometimes, you have to change the tire. You, the engine starts to wear out. And same with the material body. The material body also gives trouble. We see so many different diseases are there which affect the body and then there is also the mind. The mind also has problems. So many people today have to go to see psychiatrists. They have to learn how to control the mind. 
and usually they're simply given some medicine to take to control the mind but if we chant Hare Krishna mantra the mind can become peaceful it's important for all of us to chant this Maha Mantra. Of course, you can chant other names of God, like here we see Lord Rama. So some people like to chant to Lord Ram, Raghupati Raghavar, like that, you know, there are mantra songs to worship Lord Ram. We are chanting Hare Krishna Mantra. We are chanting this mantra because we follow our teacher, great teacher, 500 years ago, Chaitanya <coughs> Mahaprabhu. And before Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, there were also teachers. Our teaching is coming in a line, what is called parampara or succession, a line of teachers. Our teacher, the first teacher, Brahma. Do you all know Lord Brahma? Chaturmukh Brahma, right? The four-faced Brahma. <coughs> he was born from the lo lotus flower and he is the first person born in the universe. So Brahma, he was he was taught, who, who would teach him? If he was the first person born, <coughs> there was someone before him. Before he took birth, there was someone who was already there. Who was that person? Do you know? We could simply say, God, right? There was God. We may say, oh, there are many gods. Yeah, there's a god of wind, there's a god of rain, there's a god of sun, there's a god of wealth. Many different gods are there. In Hindu Dharma, there's 33 crore gods. Which god was the first one? Who, who came first? Well, that you have to learn. Before everyone, before Brahma was born and before all the other gods came, there was one God before everyone. Some people would say Vishnu. Yes, Vishnu is there. And before Vishnu, along with Vishnu, there is also Krishna. Krishna is described as the Swayam Bhagavan, the original Supreme Bhagavan, and Vishnu coming from Krishna. Just like you, if you have a candle, you light one candle and then from one candle you can light other candles. So Lord Vishnu comes like that from Lord Krishna. We want to understand there is someone behind the creation. Where did the world come from? It has to come from someone, from somewhere. We say God comes from God. Before everything God exists, there's God. God means that person from what everything comes. So, as I said, sometimes we think there are many gods. So, instead of talking about God, we could speak about the Absolute Truth. Param Satyam. The Param Satyam. That is the Supreme Lord above everyone, the Supreme Truth. And when you chant Hare Krishna Mantra, you can experience 
you can experience that there is God, that there is a person. When we start to chant the Hare Krishna mantra, we awaken our spiritual consciousness. Material consciousness, material body, temporary, full of ignorance and suffering. And the spiritual world, the spiritual body, eternal, full of bliss and knowledge. Today people spend a lot of money for education, right? Many people study, take degrees, and go to colleges and so on. So knowledge is a very important thing. But the knowledge which we get today is most is practically all concerned with the body, with the material world. Generally we find that they don't teach about spiritual knowledge, spiritual knowledge, what is eternal. What is eternal? The soul is eternal. We are presenting this knowledge based on Shastra, Shastra particularly Bhagavad Gita. Have you, have you ever read the Bhagavad Gita? Yes, did you ever read Bhagavad Gita? You know Bhagavad Gita? Really? Good? Yeah. So in Bhagavad Gita, it is described there, Najayate Mriyate Vakadachin Nayam Budva Bhavitava Nabuya Ajao nityam shasvato yam purano nahanyate anyamani shariri. That, that, that is the Sanskrit from the Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita is spoken in Sanskrit and we have translated it. Prabhupada wrote his translation on it and he <coughs> commented on it. You can read in English, you can read in French, you can read in German, you can read in Italian. We have it in Chinese, we have it in Russian, we have it in all the languages of the world, right? Mongolian also there. The books are all translated to different languages of the world <coughs> for the benefit of people who want to get education in spiritual knowledge. This knowledge is lacking in the world today. Our knowledge is all material. It's all about the body, but the body is temporary. Of course we have to take care of the body, but we have to also take care of the soul. There's a story, and, and I, a little story to tell you, to help you understand. One lady, she was living alone, so she wanted some company in her home. So she got herself a little bird, a little budgety guy. You know, put the budget, you get a cage, and you put the bird in the bud, and uh, the little bird in the cage. So. She had the little bird in the cage. She thought the little bird will keep me company. It can sing to me like that. <coughs> and so she took a lot of care of the cage. She was every day cleaning the cage and she put mirror in the cage for the bird to look at itself. You know, the bird would look in the mirror to see itself. And then there's a little bell and the bird would hit the bell, make the bell ring. And in this way the lady was happy. She thought, I have company, the bird will keep me company. And every day she's cleaning the cage, keeping the cage very clean. But then, unfortunately, you know what happened? 
the bird died. Now why did the bird die? What happened that the little bird died? It wasn't old. <laughs> it wasn't an old bird, it was a young bird. Why did the bird die? <coughs> did maybe it got some disease or something? What happened that the bird died? Well, what happened, you'll be surprised to know, she never fed the bird. She never gave the bird any food or any water. You know, if you don't take food or water, you'll die, right? So, just like the body needs food and water, the soul also needs to be taken care of. We take care of the body, we dress it nicely, you, you, you put nice creams on the body and you make it up very nicely. And we take care of our mind also. For the mind, what do you do? Maybe you listen to nice music to relax. You listen, or sometimes you go for a drive in the country. What do people do in Switzerland? Some, they'll go to the mountains and go skiing like that, or go to the lake and enjoy the, the scenery by the lakeside. That for the mind to help them feel, but still there's a higher thing, the soul. You have to take care of the soul. How to take care of the soul? What is the need of the soul? The spirit, the, that soul, that is the source of life in the body. You may have a healthy body and mind, but if you don't take care of the soul, then we get problem. How to take care of the soul? We have to <coughs> chant mantras. We have to learn to chant mantras. We need to hear kirtan, bhajans. We need to read shastra. Just like Lord Rama now in India, many people are taking a great interest in Lord Rama. Of course, they just opened the big temple in Ayodhya, right? At the birthplace of Lord Ram, they have built the big temple. And there's a lot of interest in Lord Rama. And many people are reading Ramayana. The real, the, no, there are different Ramayanas, you know, but the, the actual Ramayana is Valmiki Ramayana. So, you want to hear about Lord Rama, that is the, the best Ramayana to read. So people have a natural interest, they awaken an interest, they want to worship someone, we, they want to believe in someone, to have faith in someone. Lord Rama is very great personality. When he was present on the planet, the whole world was prosperous. No one had any problems or any anxiety. Lord Rama, the kingdom of Lord Ram was very wonderful. And so, people want to learn about Lord Rama and learn how to worship him chanting his name and reading the books about him. We give more attention to Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna is described to be the Supreme Bhagavan. Lord Rama is Maryada Avatar. He's showing perfect behavior, right? You're teaching about human values, we see the greatest human values, the greatest moral principles in the life of Lord Ram. How he behaved, very obedient to his father. Whatever his father would say, yes, yes father, I will do it, right? So he was, he's loved and respected for this. 
Lord Krishna, he is also loved by his devotees. He enjoys a very special intimacy with the devotees. Lord Krishna enjoys taking care of his devotees. In the Bhagavad Gita we learn how much Krishna takes care of the devotee. He, he, in Bhagavad Gita he is speaking to Arjuna. Arjuna is his friend and he is also a devotee. And Lord Krishna tells Arjuna that you should surrender to me. He says, Sarva Dharmam Parivishna Mamikam Sharanam Braja Aham Tvam Sarva Papedyo Mokshayashyani Masucha. Lord Krishna is saying, Give up all of your mundane material religion and just take shelter of me. I will free you from all <coughs> sinful reactions. Do not fear. This is the, the message of Lord Krishna in the Bhagavad Gita. How do we surrender? It begins by chanting. We have to chant and we can worship Krishna. We can, just like you can see Lord Krishna there with Mother <coughs> Yasoda. Lord Krishna appears in this world with a mother and a father. Someone said to me, they said, I know Krishna cannot be God, he has a mother and father. <laughs> and then he told me, he said, Shiva is God. And then he said, Shiva is light. <laughs> so, how could light be God, you know? Light is energy. And Lord Shiva, he is like a God in the material world. His relationship with Vishnu is like that between milk and yogurt. Vishnu can become Shiva. Shiva never becomes Vishnu. Milk can be made into Dahi. Dahi never becomes milk. So the relationship between Vishnu and Shiva is like that. So. <laughs> Lord Krishna is described like that, that He is the, he is the Supreme Bhagavan over all the different personalities, the different devas, the different gods. There's an interesting story. Bhrigu Muni, one of the sons of Brahma, is very senior in the higher planets, Bhrigu. So, he was, he was asked by all the different devas, he said, we want to know who is supreme between Brahma and Vishnu and Shiva. We want to know which one is the supreme. So Bhrigu Muni was sent to test them. So he went first to see his father, Lord Brahma. And when, he, when you go to see your father, you know, a son, an obedient son will respect the father. We may even touch their feet like that, we bow to them. So Bhrigu Muni went and he, he, he did not show any respect to his father. So Bhrigu Muni uh, saw that Lord Brahma was not happy because he was not getting any respect from his son. The father expects the son to show some respect to him. But Brigu did not show any respect to his father. Brahma was not pleased. He could see it. Brigu could see Brahma was not happy with him. He didn't do anything, he didn't say anything, but he knew he, he had not pleased Brahma. So then he went to Kailash to see Lord Shiva. And in Kailash, you know, Lord Shiva, he is also one of the sons of Brahma. So Bhrigu and Shiva are like brothers. So Lord Shiva saw Bhrigu Muni coming and he came to embrace him. My dear brother Bhrigu Muni. And Bhrigu Muni said, 
don't touch me, don't you come near me. He said, you've got these snakes on your body and your body's all covered in ashes, don't you touch me. Lord Shiva got very angry. He said, where's my trident, where's my trishur, I'll kill him. He was so angry. Parvati came, the wife of Lord Shiva, she came and she grabbed her husband, hugged him and hugged him. No, no, don't kill him, he's your brother, your brother. And she bring him money, you better get out of here quick before my husband kills you. <laughs> so, so bring him money, had to leave there. So then he went to Sweta Dweep to see Lord Vishnu. And in Sweta Dweep, Lord Vishnu is laying, he was laying down, you know, reclining Vishnu. And Lakshmi was massaging, giving him a massage. So what did Brigu do? He came in and he saw Lord Vishnu laying there and he kicked him on the chest. He kicked Lord Vishnu on the chest. What would you do if somebody kicks you on the chest? What did Lord Vishnu do? Lord Vishnu got up and said, Oh, my dear Brigu, I hope you did not hurt your foot on my hard chest. <laughs> so, Brigu Muni was shocked. He thought, Oh, Lord Vishnu is so tolerant. He's so peaceful. I cannot disturb him. Even though I kicked him, he didn't get even a, a little disturbed. And so in this way he understood who is the supreme between Brahma and Vishnu and Shiva. That Brahma is actually in charge of Rajagun, creation. You need a lot of Rajagun, Raja's passion to do creation. And Lord Shiva, he is in charge of Tamagun. You have to have some Tamas to destroy everything, to stop everything, to break everything down. So Lord Shiva, he's in charge of Tamagun, Lord Brahma is in charge of Rajagun, and Lord Vishnu, he is in charge of Sattvagun, the mode of goodness. Lord Vishnu maintains, he maintains, he keeps everything going. So it, maintenance is the most difficult thing. Right? You know how difficult it is to maintain something, to maintain your home, to maintain your car, to maintain your family, to keep everything going nicely. It's a lot of effort. So Lord Vishnu, he does that work. He's maintaining this whole cosmic manifestation, all the planets and everything. How does he do it? He's everywhere. He's in everything. He's in the heart of all living entities. Lord Krishna describes in the Bhagavad Gita, Sarvashyacaham mridisani vishta matapasritir jnanam apohanam cha vedaishya sarvam maham eva vedya Lord Krishna is saying, he's talking about the super soul, his expansion which is in the heart of all living entities. How many living entities are there? The Vedas tell us 84 lakhs, 8,400,000 different species of life. And Lord Krishna or Lord Vishnu is in the heart of all the living entities. He's in the birds, in the heart of the bird, he's in the heart of the tree, he's in the heart of the, the grass, everything has a soul, spirit soul. They have life. We want to understand how busy Lord Vishnu must be. No? From him comes knowledge, remembrance and forgetfulness. You want to forget? You, okay, go ahead, forget. 
We forget everything. We try to enjoy the material world. We want to get knowledge. He can help us. He can give us knowledge. And we want to remember Him also. He can do that. He helps us. So we want to understand how Vishnu is so busy, how he's doing so many things. And that Lord Vishnu, where does he come from? He's coming from Lord Krishna. There's no real difference between Vishnu and Krishna. Vishnu is a forearm form, forearm form, right? Forearm form. Then Lord Vishnu carries different symbols. He has a conch shell and he has a Sudarshan chakra and he has a club and he has a lotus flower. The four hands of Vishnu. And Lord Krishna, he's a two arm form. He's playing the flute. So sometimes people think, oh, Vishnu is greater than Krishna. He's got four arms. But it's not just the number of arms you've got. There are many different forms of different devas who have many arms. But they are not supreme. There was one demon. His, his name was Bana. And he had a hundred arms. And he was playing the drum for Lord Shiva. Right? If you have a hundred arms, you can beat the drum very good, you know. But he, he became very proud. And Lord Krishna had to cut off his arms. And he left them with, he left them with two. And he, 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 he didn't kill him because he was a devotee of Lord Shiva. Right? But he told him, you stay with Lord Shiva and serve Lord Shiva. So we have two arms, we are also trying to compete with Krishna. Krishna is Bhagavan, we are trying to become Bhagavan. We are trying to enjoy. Krishna is very wealthy, we would like to become wealthy, right? Krishna is very strong. See some people they go to the gym, they lift the weight, they want to get very strong. Krishna is very rich. We are all working, trying to make money to become rich. Krishna has got full knowledge. We are also studying, trying to improve our knowledge. Krishna is very famous. We would like to be famous. And Krishna is very renowned. We're not so sure if we like that. We don't <laughs> to be renowned, so we don't want to be renowned. But Lord Krishna is renowned. He has these qualities. That's why he is Bhagavan. We have to try to understand our relationship with Krishna. We are souls. We have a material body and the, the living thing in the body is the soul. What is the difference between the living body and the dead body? Who can tell me? What is the difference? The soul leaves the body. Yes, right. The soul leaves. There's no soul in the dead body, right? When somebody dies, we'll say, he's gone. He's gone. The body's there. But the, we say he's gone. What is gone? The life is gone. That life was the soul. It's the soul which gives life to the body. Our soul is very small, very tiny. Now Lord Krishna, he is all. His, his body is not material like our body. We have a material body, but Krishna's body is spiritual. Our body grows, it gets bigger, it gets older, and one day we'll die. <coughs> Lord Krishna comes to this world 
And he also, it, he appears to have a body. We see him here as a little baby with his mother. And he grows to become a young man and he's playing the flute, taking care of the cows. But he never grows old. You never see Krishna with grey hair. <laughs> His hair doesn't fall out, he doesn't become bald, <laughs> you know. He's always youthful, he's Nava Yovana, eternally youthful. Are any of you eternally youthful? <laughs> no. 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 We're trying, we'd like to be, but we're not. <laughs> Lord Krishna came to this world, he stayed in this world more than a hundred years and still he was just like a young man. So he came to this world, he stayed for some, he has a mission in coming to the world. What is the mission described in Bhagavad Gita? Yada yada hi dharmasya glani bhavati bharata Adhutanam madharmasya tadatmanam sijamyaham paritranaya sadhunam vinashaya chaduskritam dharmasam stapanartaya sambhavami yuge yuge. Lord Krishna's mission to please the devotee, just like Mother Yashoda, Lord Krishna is giving pleasure to his mother. And Lord Krishna comes also to kill the demons, to annihilate the demons like Kams, Kams, Sishupal, many different demons, Putan, Putana, the witch came when he was a little baby, tried to kill Krishna. And then so many other different demons all came trying to kill Krishna and Krishna killed them. And Lord Krishna comes to establish dharma, to establish religion, to teach people how to be dharmic. How, what, what are the principles of dharma? There are four principles in dharma, of dharma. Satyam, Sojam, Daya, Tapa. The symbol of re religion is the four, leg four legs of a bull. Sometimes you have a bull, any of you keep any cows at home? No? No cows here. This is Switzerland, so many big cows. <laughs> you don't have any cows? Oh, not good, right? We should have cows. So, cows, the bull has four legs. The four legs are the pillars of Dharma. Satyam, truthfulness. Sochyam, cleanliness, daya, mercy, and tapa, austerity. Satyam, we should be truthful, we should not lie and cheat, we should be honest. Right? And then Sochyam, we should be clean. How to clean the heart? Not only clean the body, clean the heart. How are you going to clean the heart? Anybody know? By being honest. Get a new heart, do a bypass. <laughs> <laughs> by being honest. By being honest. By chanting the mantra. By, chan <laughs> by yes. chanting yes. the mantra. Yes, we have, to, we have to associate with the pure. We have to associate with Krishna. When we are in touch with Krishna, then we will become pure like Krishna. Lord Krishna is always pure. So we have to become, we, if we associate with him by chanting his name, our heart will also become pure. We can keep the heart, the mind clean by chanting his name. And we chant many names of Krishna. We have many songs of Krishna's names. We like to chant different names of Krishna. So, Satyam, Sojam, Daya, mercy, a very important quality. Mercy is destroyed by meat eating, killing animals, especially 
sinful to kill the cow. The cow is very sacred. The cow is our mother. Just like mother feeds the child her milk, the cow is also giving milk for the human people. Milk is important for our brain. You know, every child, as children, they need milk. We need milk to nourish the body, to develop the tissues in the brain. It's very important for health. So all babies, they have to get milk. So the cow is very important. We should not eat meat. If you're killing the cow, very, very bad. What? Because I, I, I'm traveling a lot in Far Eastern countries, so I go to countries like China. So I was explaining to a group of people one evening about should not eat cow's meat. And the one lady said to me, she said, my son will only eat cow's meat. He won't eat any other meat. He wants always cow's meat. I said, oh, this is very bad. I said, why did, why like that? She said, well, when he was a small boy, he was sick. So I wanted to give him the best meat to make him strong. So I got beef, I got the cow's meat for him. I said, well, that was not the right thing to do. I said, you have given him the, the cow's meat. You have given him very heavy karma very heavy reactions will come from that. So, I said, you bring your son. So, next day the son came and I spoke to him and I told him, you know, you, you, you cannot take the cow's meat, it's very bad. So, he agreed he would take some other meat like chicken or something like that, white meat. But I said, if you eat the cow, it's very, very bad to kill the cow. Unfortunately, I understand a lot of cows are being killed here in Switzerland. It's not good. We want to encourage people in how to take care of the cow. Lord Krishna, appeared in the family of Vaishyas and the duty of the Vaishya is to protect the cows. And Lord Krishna's father had nine lakh cows, nine hundred thousand cows. And Lord Krishna would go to the forest, he would take cows to the forest with Balaram every day as a young boy. So Lord Krishna was teaching us the importance of the cows, to take care of them, protect them. So Daya, a pillar of religion, don't eat meat and we will not eat even fish or egg. These things are not needed. Why not? There's so many vegetables. You have vegetables. You have fruit, you have grains, why you need to have meat? Why you need to eat the fish or these things? You can live very nicely without them. Some of the healthiest, strongest people in the world are vegetarian. You don't need to eat the meat. And so it's an important thing to learn. We need to control. The, the tongue. We have in the body we have senses and the most difficult sense to control this tongue. Tongue likes to eat and it likes to speak, right? <laughs> we eat all kinds of things and we speak all kinds of things as well. We have to learn to control. This is yoga. You're practicing yoga you have to control and it begins with the control the tongue. How to control the tongue? Chanting Maha Mantra, chanting Hare Krishna Mantra and taking prasad. Prasad means the food offered to Krishna. 
When we eat the food offered to Krishna, then we become purified. When you eat the meat and the other things, you don't become purified. Sorry. You're getting problem, you're bringing karma, bad karma onto us. So four principles, satyam, socham, daya, tapa. Austerity. Austerity means to give up pride and to become humble. That is a tapasya. So therefore we should not take any kind of intoxication. We don't drink alcohol, we don't smoke, we don't even drink tea or coffee <laughs> because there's <laughs> caffeine in these things. <coughs> the caffeine, it's a drug, they're drugs, you know, yeah. you get addicted. Some people told me they can't get, can't get up in the morning without a cup of tea, right? It's common. I see when I'm in India on the train, they always come, chai, chai. <laughs> <laughs> people will pull the cover off. <laughs> a cup of tea first thing in the morning, they have to have their chai. Mm. So that is tapasya, controlling these things. And when you when you follow the when you practice these principles and chant Hare Krishna, then you can feel the spiritual energy. You can feel the awakening of spiritual power. You can feel a change in life. You'll become happy, you'll become peaceful, <coughs> you'll be satisfied, you'll become blissful because we'll experience our spiritual nature, the nature of the soul. Because we're associating with the Supreme. So I come here today to ask all of you, please you try to add this chanting of Hare Krishna mantra and you will see for yourself. It, this is a science. I studied science when I was a young man at college, I graduated. I have a Bachelor of Science from the UK. But I think this is the greatest science, the science of yoga the science of mind control. We need to learn this science and it's for our ultimate benefit. Benefit in this life and in the next, right? Where are we going in the next life? We should be thinking also about that. Now you have the human life, but next life, where will you go? We must be careful, we have to be thoughtful. So chanting Hare Krishna is a very good way to begin. You add this into your daily life. And if you don't have a Bhagavad Gita, then this lady will give you one, she'll get a Bhagavad Gita. Yeah, we have Bhagavad Gita in French and uh, Tamil and English. You have to get Hindi for her. Yeah, Hindi. <laughs> Someone can speak in French also. Translation? Oh, yeah. Someone can. Uh, then my can. What? They want a translation in French. Oh. What? Translation of the class? Yeah. Translation of the class, right? Yes. So? No, oh, you're French. Je ne parle pas français. He can German, he can give German. Poland can translate. No, Tanmai can translate. It's better than me. Tanmai, really? Yeah, Tanmai is, yes. French very good? Yes, she is Swiss. Swiss. Tanmai? She, raise your hand. Swiss. Of the class you should give it. Oh, you're French, yes. right? Yes. Yeah, the so most can you give a, right? a summary of the class? <laughs> yes, but uh, yeah, I don't know everything. Yeah, just the summary. You can try. Yes. Yeah, sure.
Do we really need it? Yes. So, we could have done it. Okay. Okay. Any question? Anyone? Does anyone have any question? Please. Do you have any question? You're chanting. He has a question. Yeah. You were saying that uh, the cow is like the mother because it gives us milk. Yeah. But there are many other animals that also give us milk, like the goat. Yeah, but cow's milk is different from goat's milk, and camel's milk, and other creatures' milk. It's a cow's milk which is especially valuable, which is especially beneficial to the body, to the brain. Where you want to drink milk, it's, it's cow's milk which is the best of all milk. Of course, nowadays there's a lot of people who are vegan and they don't like to take anything coming from the animals because they feel the animals are being abused, they're not being treated fairly. So we point out to them that we take the milk from our own cows, from cows which are protected and cared for. The other, generally the, the, the cows have become just, they've been treated very brutally like machines and they use machines to drain every drop of milk from them. We don't do like that with cows, which we keep. In our different centers we have our own herd of cows and we milk them by hand and we care for them. Even they don't give milk, we will still care for the cows. Even they become old and dry, we won't kill them. We'll keep, keep them and care for them. So, cow's milk is a very special quality. Like buffalo also have milk, right? Buffalo milk, goat's milk, you know, camel. I mean, you can study the nature of these animals, you know. It, they're not on the standard of the cows. The cows eat grass. They're G generally gentle and loving creatures. So we take care of the cow and we treat them like mothers. And the cow's milk is especially suitable for offering. In India, the temples, usually at temples, they'll have some cows and the milk will be used to offer in the temple. But you won't find too many people drinking goat's milk or camel's milk. <laughs> these, these things. This year is the year of the camel, you know. <laughs> so I, 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 was, I was in the Middle East and uh, they were promoting 2024, the year of the camel. It's important. The camel's an important animal in the desert, if you live in the desert. And so drinking camel's milk, drinking goat's milk or buffalo milk, not, not the same as cow's milk. You drink buffalo milk, you get buffalo brain. <laughs> <laughs> not very attractive. You don't want a brain like a buffalo. Yeah, I have one. Yes. By, by your reasoning, how do the people in desert live without meat, cow meat? How do they live without cow meat? Yeah. Where? <laughs> they do grass here in the desert. In the desert? Yeah. Well, <laughs> you don't have cows. 
How, how do you survive? Well, first of all, if they're living in the desert, you know, that's an indication of their unfortunate karma. It's put them into that kind of condition that they're living in a desert where there's no vegetation. So what to eat? What do they eat? One thing is, they don't need to eat cows. There are other animals. You're going to eat anim You're going to eat meat. That's the point. Is you can wait for the animal to die. You don't need to kill them. You wait for the animal to die naturally. Then you can eat the animal. Then you can eat the flesh. But to kill it, that is very barbaric. That is very sinful. And if you see how they treat the, how they kill the animals in the slaughterhouses. It's the most horrible treatment. And if you were to go to a slaughterhouse and what you would never want to go and eat meat after watching how the animals are killed. So you wait for the animal to die. And animals also die. Once they're dead then you can eat them. And that's it. That's it. You have to wait for the, for the death of the animals before you eat meat. Well, they're all going to, just like us, we also die, they also die. Everywhere there, everywhere there's food. Yeah. Food for different kinds of people. But a desert is a place where you're not meant to do sacrifice. Yagna is not meant to be performed in the desert. It's not. It's a place of sin. It's a desert. That's why it's a desert, because of some karma. So people are not meant to live in the desert. In India you have it also. Sorry? In India also you have a desert. Yes, but doesn't mean people doesn't mean people have to live there in the desert. Generally the desert it's a desert. Nobody wants to go in that no, no, it's uninhabitable. No. So people won't live there. Yeah, you don't have water, no water to drink. How can you live there? So we have to learn how to live a natural life depending on nature. Actually everything is provided for every living entity. The camels can live in the desert. How do they live in the desert? They can store the water and they can carry the water inside their body for a lot. They can go across the desert. We don't have bodies like the camel. No, we don't. We just That's our karma, eh? Yes. Yeah. Oh, thank you very much. Yeah, there's a, an, you, we have to understand different conditions, you have to adapt to that situation. Human beings are not that adaptable. Well, there are different kinds of human beings, you know. <laughs> you have Eskimos, they can live in at the ice. <laughs> You have tribal people, you have people living in the mountains, they learn to live in the mountains. Other people can live on the flat land where the land is arable, where it's good for agriculture. But other people, they learn to live in the mountains, they're able to live there. There's no supermarket there, <laughs> but they're able to live. <laughs> <laughs> 
They, they live on what's provided. But if we, when we kill other animals, when we kill other forms of life, then it, it's not good for us. It's not going to help us. It's I wouldn't agree that everyone does it. Well, we we have to understand we're just simply following mm -hmm. other blind people. The bl if a blind man follows another blind man, you cannot expect to get a good result. <laughs> you may say, oh, Western people are all eating meat. Yes, they're all, they're blind, you know. Actually, now in the West, a lot of people have changed. And vegetarianism and veganism have become very common. And that's why you'll see a lot of restaurants now they're also offering vegetarian and vegan food. They don't because there is a demand. More and more people are understanding the need. It doesn't create a good society when we're killing, if we're regularly killing everything for our own just just for our own tongue. There's so many things to eat. You can get a lot of nutrition, a lot of just by eating grains and beans. There's so many beans available growing. You can grow so many nice things. You don't need to eat meat. You eat if you eat grains and fruits and vegetables. You can get all the nutrition you want. So in our, in our Krishna conscious centers, we usually we will prepare nice vegetarian foodstuffs and let everyone taste and try it. And, and many people become convinced that this is best. And we have cooking classes, we do courses on cooking. Huh. Krishna Rupa Prabhu, Krishna Prima Rupa, he also knows, he's an expert cook. As well as an ex, he's the man, the manager overseeing the affairs of our Swiss yatra. But he also knows we all learn cooking, and Prabhupada was the one who taught us all to cook. You know, he came from India, he came from Bengal, and he taught us to cook. And he cooks the Bengali sweets. You know, Bengali is famous famous for sweets. Bengali sweets, rasgulla. Sandesh and, <laughs> and these things are all made from milk, right? And milk comes from the cow. The cows are so kind, they give very valuable food. Okay. So we have some food here to, to all, uh, we can distribute, right? This is uh, Kalyani, this, the food is for uh, offering. Yes. Yeah, we have to yeah, offer. We have to offer. I offer. Okay. Uh, Sonal, uh, she has prepared uh, prasha food. Mm -hmm. She is uh, chanting. Oh, really? Yeah, she yeah. has uh, prepared a nice food that Very has good. to be offered. Okay. So we will offer this sweet? Yes, yes. Yeah. We have also legumes. 